Hello and welcome everybody to our talk on how Grafana can be used for the future. We use Grafana mainly for forecasting, so our time series go ahead of time, and that might be the biggest difference to how you are usually dealing with time series. Thanks to the Grafana team for setting up the conference in Europe and for the opportunity to share our story here. Um, I am presenting today with Max, who has been doing IT stuff around in the energy business for about 15 years. My name is Steffen and I have been around doing IT stuff for roughly the same time. At Energy Weather, we are joined by Robin, our meteorologist. He's a creative mind and his ideas challenge us to use uh, many of the exciting features of Grafana. Um, energy Weather isn't exactly a weather service. You can think of us as a translator between weather and energy business. Our job is to reduce complexity and provide specific information like a wind power forecast for a specific region or um, a quantification of risk like a sudden drop of temperature that affects energy markets. The energy business is complex and we could talk about that for hours. Today we will show you what we do and uh, pick some examples for weather impact and we will show you how we use Grafana to visualize it and to make it easy to understand. Yeah. I learned we, you have to use some kind of chart, so um, our backend system is written in C-sharp. All data processing and computing is done there. We receive uh, several forecasts from weather models. At this stage, we are dealing with gridded forecast data sets that contain values for each grid point around the globe. Um, they go up, go ahead 16 days in time and have a resolution of, say, 1 to 12 hours. And the spatial resolution between each grid point is around, uh, goes down to 4 kilometers. Um, these data sets are unpacked, imported, maybe interpolated, and we then use them for our internal forecast processes. And these processes output time series. We use these time series to create customer-specific output files, mostly in some more or less weird CSV format. Up to 2015, that was the only end of the process. Then something changed. Um, I first saw Grafana at the Chaos Communication Camp north of Berlin in 2015, and immediately thought, well, that's it. We have been looking for a visualization solution for in-house analysis of forecasts for quite a long time, and it came up at the best possible time. The first installation of Grafana along with InfluxDB that we use as database backend was performed before the camp ended, and implementation of support for InfluxDB in our backend system was not a problem. And when Robin, our weather guy, saw Grafana running, it kept him smiling for days was really great. So this is a screenshot of one of our first dashboards back from those rain tank times, must be Grafana version 2.0 anything. We used it for internal analysis of forecasts for photovoltaic power plants. Um, it shows the forecast along with measurements we received afterwards. And you can see the clouds passing by if you look at the blue line which shows the measurement. For plants with next to real-time measurement data feeds, this allows even for real-time monitoring or next to real-time monitoring of the forecast and you can evaluate it and you have instant feedback, which is really great. So obviously, this was quite a big step for us, considering the solution we had at the moment. You can have a look. So. <laughs> You can surely understand that we were a little sad to see this beauty going. <laughs> but actually, the installation of Grafana took less time than the development of this groundbreaking prototype that you see in the screenshot. So there was no discussion about which road to follow. But in fact, there were some things we had to consider. While implementing Grafana and InfluxDB, we had a close look on how performance changes as we add more and more data into the database. There is a significant change or difference between how um, time series are used in monitoring and how we use them in forecasting. For monitoring, if you look at a CPU usage for a specific core, you have one long time series that spans over a long, long time with values that might have a resolution of five minutes, one minute, or one second or so. 
For forecasting, if you look at, say, the temperature for a specific location, you have a time series that spans over, say, the next 14 days in 15 minutes or 60 minutes resolution. And that's not much. But we calculate a new forecast every hour. And every, every time a new forecast has been calculated, we add it to the database as a new time series. We are not overwriting the old ones, because uh, for some applications, it's important to see the difference from one forecast to the next forecast for the same point in the future. So we need the old ones to do that. That leads to quite a number of time series in the database. Every hour, we calculate roughly about 10,000 time series, which leads to, to 240,000 time series added to the database uh, every day, or um, about 7 million each month. And we have to consider this when thinking about database performance. Especially back in the days when we started using Grafana and InfluxDB, we had uh, strict retention policies in place that would keep the database light. Every now and then, uh, we drop time series that we didn't need anymore by hand to keep the system responsive. Yeah, um, this became a lot better over the years. Performance improved a lot from our viewpoint. So thanks for the to the Influx guys. That saved us some time. Um, with every update to Grafana, it became more and more clear that it could be used for so much more than just internal analysis of forecasts and comparing it to measurements and so on. And over the past years, we uh, introduced Grafana to be a front-end solution open to customers. We have developed around uh, 130 dashboards that use the features of Grafana to provide views um, that are easy to understand. So one question to you, who of you uh, uses the light scheme in Grafana that has just been updated? Okay, fine, we do. <laughs> and I will now hand over to Max, who will show you how it looks like. Thanks. Thanks. And Thanks for being invited. I've put my light scheme shirt on, so um, yeah. Obviously, the energy business um, partly occupied GrafanaCon. Erwin yesterday showed us how to monitor power consumption at home. Um, Ryan did an amazing talk about hydroelectrical power plants, and um, Andrew gave us some insight on energy, energy efficiency in Washington, D.C., and later this afternoon we have a talk from Ari Yan about subsurface storage. So, um, lucky to us, nobody talked about weather yet. So, uh, this is our part. Um, and luckily, we all got scarves. <laughs> One question, who, is, who was wearing the scarf today? So lots, lots here. Yeah. You see, weather has impact on us and our behavior, so also on the energy market. The energy market, like every other market, has two sides, supply and demand. On the supply side, there are um, many types of power genera generation, like nuclear plants, coal, gas plants, hydroelectric, as we heard yesterday, and, of course, wind and photovoltaics, and many more. Uh, these plants are connected to a transmission grid to deliver the electricity to the customers, the demand side. This is the heavy industry or everybody in this room. Um, nearly every weather condition um, can cause reactions on the side of the market participants, on both sides. So um, we start with the supply side. This dashboard is made for producers of power or grid operators. It shows the current and expected renewable energy production for the German grid. Um, on the top left, the dark line shows the current wind power forecast. Um, as forecasts aren't always spot on, um, we provide a yellow colored range for the most likely outcome of the forecast. Um, the bar chart in pink shows the measurements that are provided in near time or sometimes real time by the grid operators usually. Uh, you see it's very close to the forecast, um, which was good. Um, on the right, we have, added, uh, we have used the text panel um, to integrate an um, uh, animated wind map from windy.com, which is an awesome project as well. And on the bottom left, you see the photovoltaics forecast um, in the same style we used for the wind. Um, on the bottom right, 
we show, and this was Stefan was to talking about, um, the difference, the difference uh, towards one previous forecast. Um, one remark on these figures: the combined wind and power, uh, wind and uh, photovoltaic generating generation, uh, was nearly 20 gigawatts in average on this day. That is nearly one-third of the usual demand in a winter month in Germany. Uh, so on a sunny and windy day in February, maybe every third power plant might not be needed. So a dashboard like this helps a supplier optimizing generation planning or um, at least show risks for possible plant downtimes. So in short, there is an impact on the supply side. Um, any idea what weather parameter is most important, usually most important for the demand side? Temperature? Did I hear temperature? I hear temperature. Yes, it's temperature. <laughs> uh, if you think, yeah, on your behavior, if it's cold outside, you turn on the heating, and um, on a hot summer day, you are happy if there's much cooling, air conditions, or whatever. Uh, and this chart, or this dashboard, um, shows on the top chart the temperature forecast for France, uh, provided by four common weather models. Um, the black line in this chart uh, shows a long-term average temperature. Um, and this is, because, uh, this is important um, because demand expectations usually are based on long-term averages. Um, as you can see, the temperature is much colder than expected in the first days. This, informa this information is not enough for proper planning, so our backend translates it into how the power demand will change. Um, as you can see in the table below, the power demand is much higher in the last days of February, and in the beginning of March, the conditions come back to normal marked in gray. So, at least in France, this was the case. Um, last but not least, on the bottom right, um, we show a power demand forecast in a daily and hourly resolution. So, there are many more examples on different weather parameters on how weather can impact the energy business. But to keep it simple, weather has a strong impact on power production and power demand as well. So knowing this and having the three other um, talks about energy business, you are nearly energy ex experts now, and uh, let's take the next step. With a database um, filled with weather and uh, energy data, we are able to produce, produce customized market overviews. Furthermore, we were able to even calculate price trends or price forecasts. Um, in this dashboard, we use the Grafana table panels um, and the gorges to indicate the quality of our price forecast. Um, the graphs below show the input, the input data into our model that lead to the price forecast, which is displayed on the uh, bottom right. Um, the forecast we created is in green, and the final price provided by the exchange is in red. Um, you see also the gorges are a little bit uh, skeptical that day. The forecast was OK. And uh, of course, we like this chart because there's much orange in it, and in Netherlands, orange is always good. Um, so this dashboard shows an hourly price forecast for only one day. Um, and it can even be extended. Uh, we created afterwards this dashboard uh, with the use of Grafana tables to show the price changes, and we used the spark lines to visualize the de development um, along with an average price for the upcoming weeks. So um, we like these spark lines. It's an amazing simplification of visualizing something. Um, and it's all together in one aggregated dashboard. There's a change of weather translated into a change of power, demand and some supply combined. Um, 
And this transformed into an estimated price change in the next weeks. So you can see Grafana can indeed be used to look into the future. And um, this is what our talk was about. It was a pleasure to show you these un unusual use cases or uncommon usage of Grafana. And we are happy to discuss or simply answer yeah. questions. Yeah. No question? Oh, here's one. Um, can, can you explain a bit how uh, the user chooses which data series, which forecast to look at in the dashboard? Like, um, because you said you have, uh, like, uh, every day you have 24 new yeah, we, forecasts. And it depends. Sometimes we use templating to um, give the user the opportunity to switch between update runs. Um, I think you can see it here as well on, on the top. Uh, at least there we can show uh, all the days we have calculated, and the user can pick one. But usually, to be honest, it's, uh, the most important thing is uh, the latest forecast. Um, but there are cases that, the, that not only the absolute number of the forecast, but also the differentiation between the previous update, or maybe the update before the weekend, or the, from yesterday afternoon, is important. So um, there are use cases. Um, but usually, we prepare our dashboards so there is not no need for much user interaction. Do we have any other questions? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>